All right, so welcome back to the channel. I promise you guys that I will try to get that JKS Quick Disconnect video up and running. I believe I've done a pretty decent job of the installation and the unboxing. Uh, stay tuned to the end of the video where I'm talking about some free stuff I'll be giving away. All you guys gotta do is subscribe, like my Instagram, and I'll do a drawing for those three items. It's at the end, don't skip to the end, watch the video, and leave your comments and tell me what you think. All right. JKS quick disconnect install. So how's everybody doing? Today, we're gonna go into an unboxing of a part that I'm about to install on the Jeep. Before I go on this uh, camping trip tomorrow, there's a little bit of light off-roading. And it is the JKS quicker disconnects for the JL um, Wrangler. This is gonna be the 2.5 to 6 inch lift. So let's start with the unboxing procedure. sleeves, the pin, um, some bushings, and they quick release pins themselves in this one bag. Wrapped up in here, looks like it's going to be one of the storage brackets for the quick disconnects that mounts to the top of the shocks, or excuse me, top of the uh, springs. Looks like it's going to be another one. Boom, it sure is. Then some hardware and the two quick disconnects. One, two. Alright, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, and I'm probably not gonna put it back on there, and I'm gonna remove this splash guard or whatever you wanna call it. Move these tabs right here to get the splash guard off. Yeah, got one, two, three. I already moved that one. So four, five, six, seven, eight. The way you're gonna do this, he's gonna grab something flat. You're gonna get in there and you're gonna pry it down. This is really hard with one hand. But after it drops down, that grommet inside of it is released. So then you can just pop the rest of it down. You're gonna have two bolts. You have a bolt right here that you're gonna have to loosen and a bolt right here. And it should come down right after that. So I'm gonna do that real quick and we'll continue. is gonna be our end links. So you're gonna have an Allen key for your top bolt. And that's what's gonna hold it. So you're gonna have to put an Allen key and a wrench in here and it's gonna be real tedious, but you gotta hold an Allen key to prevent the shaft from spinning and you can use your wrench and loosen it until it pops off. That's tedious. On the bottom part, it's two parts. You got a, a uh, bolt and a nut. So that's gonna be real easy to remove. The top part is gonna be real tricky. All right, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. Essentially the same thing on this side, except for you guys, there's a nut that's in here that's gonna hold that for you. I don't really have that nut because I lost it, so I have to rely on something totally different to make it work. But it's the same concept, so I'm gonna do it real quick without the camera, 
and you can figure it out. And then we'll continue from there. All right, so a few things real quick. I have to run to the auto store, auto zone, and pick up one thing, reading through the instructions. Grease, this is just all purpose. It said some kind of grease for, um, what was the term they use? Some kind of grease for a uh, wheel bearing or something like that. So I got some all purpose grease and I had to buy a grease gun because they need to be greased. All right, so these fittings need to be greased. So I went out, it was about $23 for everything. It was all said and done. A grease and a grease gun. I've got to grease those labels. Another thing it said was go ahead and adjust this to a certain um, length. So I'm also going to knock that out real quick. It's going to get adjusted more later on. So starting measurement is going to be nine inches for two and a half to three and a half inch. Three and a half inch lift. I have a three, two and a half, so I'll go ahead and adjust this to nine inches for the time being. Damn. It was already at nine. way over nine at that point. I hope they mean from end to end. Ain't no way in hell this is from end to end. Yeah, this is not even nine inches in length so I'm thinking it's gonna be from center to center it's gonna be nine inches that's what I'm gonna go with because this is like nine and a half inches in itself so I'm just gonna do that center to center nine inches It's not going to move around as much as if it wasn't locked in place. Now adjustments will be made later on. But for now I'm just going to lock it in. Boom. Good to go. Alright, so now we're going to do the cutting. It's only on the passenger side. It's going to be this bracket right here that stands alone. We're going to cut it way back because we need the room for the quicker disconnect. Um, shaft that's gonna come from this hole that is a part of this entire assembly track bar assembly So this is gonna remain we're gonna cut this back so we can have the room. All right, you don't need to do it on the um, Driver's side cuz it's only a one bolt method versus This side of the passenger. So we're gonna get the cutting back All right, I'm making sure I'm wearing the correct protective equipment. I suggest you do the same So this is all I have. So this is what I'm going to use right here to paint it. I already did one coat, so I'm going to wait. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to move on to installing the driver's side hardware. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the sleeve. You're going to put the sleeve in the top portion along with your rubber bushing. You want to make sure that your grease fitting is facing towards the front of the vehicle. Then we're gonna put our so we're gonna 
put bolt with washer in, followed by washer and bolt once it's mounted. We're gonna screw that down. Then we're gonna do the same thing to the passenger side up top. Bolt, washer, our sleeve is already installed. And we're gonna put our bush in and slide it into the frame onto the bracket, followed by a washer and a nut. Remember, you want to make sure the fitting is facing forward. Now we're gonna screw this down, get this secured. You wanna make sure you keep the pinholes parallel to the ground like that. Not up and down, but parallel with the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm going to stick an Allen key in there help keep it parallel as I'm tightening the nut. Alright, it's gonna be a size 19. So that's what we're gonna use. So I lost the light when I was trying to install everything and in so I just walked through what I did. So again, you installed everything on the top. You're gonna have your nut, washer, your spacer, washer, and bolt secure on the top portion. And on the bottom, and this is on your passenger side, you're gonna have your nut, washer, your sh shaft, and then a quick release pin. It's going to secure your bottom portion and again you want to make sure that that is parallel to the ground so you want to go across and not up and down parallel to the ground and above that you're going to have a bracket that you install and it's dry it's specific to the side so this is going to be a passenger side it's only going to fit one way and i believe a 12 millimeter or 10 millimeter nut is going to secure that the hole is already on the spring perch itself, so you don't have to worry about drilling into this, it's already there. You just screw it right in and secure it to the top of this. And as you can see, there's already holes in there for you to put that um, release pin up top when you go to store it when you're going off road. And that is the passenger side. So, with your driver's side, is the exact same thing nut, washer, spacer washer bolt on the top portion on the bottom portion i have it the quicker disconnect stored so i'll show you what that looked like but this is what it looks like when it's not stored or when it is stored you're gonna have your bushing on this side the shaft and your nut and washer in fact there is no washer on this side and then this is what it looks like when it's stored on a bracket so you just remove that quick release pin, you angle it up, put it back in, and then you slide it in with your quick release pin. With your quick release pin, you wanted it oriented this way, where this portion is facing the wheel. Alright, so that wraps up the install of the JKS Quicker Disconnects. Now, don't forget to tighten that jam nut down that um, is on the Quicker Disconnects. I didn't really go into too much detail on that, but make sure you tighten those down once you get everything leveled according to the manual from JKS. 
Now, on to the giveaways. I have three things. I have a two relocation backers for spare tires, one for the JK and one for the JL. Frank gave me one, the other one I had for my previous vehicle that I never used. And I also have a set of fog lights, uh, the halos, LEDs that came with some headlights that my girlfriend ordered for my Christmas that I'm not gonna use because the motor bit bumper I have don't have slots for fog lights. So I'll be giving those away. All you have to do is be subscribed to the YouTube channel and follow on the Instagram. Both names are the same, Sketchy Jeep. Check them out. And once I do the unboxing for my winch that I have downstairs, my Swedenbill winch, I'll be starting those uh, giveaways. Probably every two weeks or so, I'll do a giveaway of one. So it should last about a month and a half. And yes, so that means two of the things can be crossed off of that list. The bumper and the winch. And I'm gonna add the lift kit on there. I'm looking at the rock crawler. Next, that's gonna be one of my top priorities. And a few other things that a few people have messaged me saying it's probably a good idea, fire extinguisher. Definitely some uh, recovery gear. That's high on top of the list. Probably get that first before anything else now that I have a winch and a bumper. And yeah, so again, do all those stuff. Subscribe to the channel. I'll be pushing my content as time goes on. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.